How was the fight between Lennox Lewis and Tyson? Who was who was a harder opponent? I think Tyson, you know what I mean? Very, very awkward. Very difficult to catch. But I think Tyson was on the, the slide then. He was partying too hard. Um, I think Lennox Lewis had got him at the right sort of like time. But if you go back in time, watch DVDs of Mike Tyson when he was in his prime, you know what I mean? The people he knocked out and he's so young, you got to take that into consideration because not too many... I don't think there's going to be another heavyweight who will come on this earth how short and be as dangerous as that man. And I've got to give him respect, you know what I mean? Because he's a dangerous hombre. In the Lennox Lewis fight, you were winning on the scorecards. Yeah. Do you ever feel you were just so close as well sometimes in, in some of these big yeah. events? Yeah, yeah, sometimes you get close. That's why sometimes you, you feel like you need to give up. But sometimes I don't think I would have lived with myself if I would have given up. Because that was my, my determination to have my name put on WBC champ Frank Bruno from England. And your fourth time for a world title, you, yeah. you end up uh, right. champion Wembley, oh, back yeah. arena. How, how was it feeling before that, Frank? Especially losing three before that and then going into your fourth. Did you ever feel as if that was never going to be? It was hard, but I had to persevere, you know what I mean? Oliver McCall, I knew him, but he was a very, very dangerous guy in the ranks of whatever ways there were around there. Ray Mercer, um, Larry Holmes, um, Mike Dokes, Greg Page, um, James Critillis, you know what I mean? All names that Greg, all names there were as heavyweights and I don't, it, you had to be very, very good in that era to get a little touch. Because Don King was Don King controlling everything. So to get a little touch in there is very hard. Yeah. So when you won that, what's going through your mind? Can you remember that night? Of course I remember that night. Of course, of course I remember that night. I sweat to bed in the belt, but I was so thirsty to put the belt there and get get the duty done, you know what I mean? Put the belt <laughs> back in. You know, I'm like guiding in the mirror looking at the belt. I didn't sleep that night. I was very, very happy, bruised up here and there, but very happy. And at that moment now, that that's all your dreams come true? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Everything you've done in your life was for that moment to win the world title? Uh, yeah, and to carry on, you know what I mean, being a rich man. How did people treat you after that, Frank? Um, I don't know. People treat me as Frank Bruno, you know what I mean? No different than anyone else. And yeah, people just treat you as up. I don't, what, in what way would you say? No, because like I say, you're a legend in the sport. But if, when yeah. you started doing all the adverts and stuff, like yeah. people were having their little digs and shit. Oh yeah, I done pantomime. They had a dig. I done um, H P ever. They 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 criticised me for that. But I, I'm a boxer. Terry Lawrence always told me this: got to live after boxing. You have something coming in from doing. So I done pantomime. I done it's a knockout. I done pantomime for about eight years. It was good fun. Good experience. And especially when the man is dyslexic and you got to read the script. I winged it. Even when I, the last day, I didn't even know what I was saying, but I rang it until I got used to the thing and I, I had some good shows through Panamon. Yeah, so that's the sad thing as well, that someday coming from where you've came from to then being champion of the world, to then having opportunities to make some money, provide for your family, and yet people have wee digs. This is yeah. the, the thing that's fucking wrong with society. In my yeah, own opinion, yeah, that yeah, yeah. people same see same. success as a negative when really yeah. it should be embraced, when really people should be looking at as if he can do it, Positive, I can do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad that is, yeah, but you put it on the door now. That's how human beings are. I suppose you get some people jealous of what how you're doing, but them making you jealous should give you more strength, more determination to go forward, you know? and to put your fingers up to them or one thing or whatever. Yeah, it's good to do that as well. Yeah. Did that affect you at any point? What's that? Did that affect you that when people started pointing and prodding? I didn't really listen to too much people because sometimes I see Joshua fight the other day and he was worried about what the people were telling him before he went into the fight. So I didn't want anyone to know or get involved. Sometimes I used to like to look at the opponent, but I would train very, very hard, just go in there, touch wood, and go in there and fight. If I do well, I do well. If I don't, I don't. Yeah. On the, once you won the world title, the agreement clause was to fight Mike Tyson after that? Yes, um, Frank Warren let me sign that. And Frank Warren didn't let me have Henry Bramman, who came to represent me, to, to iron out a good contract. But I can't really talk over Sport Mill because Frank Warren was watching. He was saying, I'm a ungrateful so and so. I'm not ungrateful. I thank him from the bottom of my heart for raising and making that fight with Oliver McCall. But I don't know how a man could be in prison. And then he comes straight on to be number one contender for my belt. Yesterday, so let that go. 
Does that play in your mind? That, that you... it doesn't play in my mind. But these promoters, they're very, very tricky, and I can see why some people get lawyers for their backside. Because sometimes, if they they're trying to tread on your toes, they're trying, you know, mistreat you, and you know, they make a lot of money for most. I didn't realize how much money they made, but that was yesterday, man, and it's going for today. Yeah, so you fight Mike Tyson again. Yeah. He's just out of prison. He does it. Did, did you ever feel as if you had you would have the edge then if he was away for a few years? What, in prison? Yeah. Nah, man, they'd be chasing his ass all over the place. <laughs> 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 I bet he couldn't even bend down in the shower. Or like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, a lot of friends I know are in prison, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you, I've, been in, I've been in prison to visit friends and whatever, but I don't know what it's like when they shut the door. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I've got lots of friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it as that, man. Go on to the next question. So that was your last fight, Frank? Was that your last fight against Mike Tyson? Yeah, that was my last fight, yeah. How was that then? Like, amazing yeah, career. Nice. It was sad in a way, but it's not the way I wanted it, but this way the cookie crumbles. When I fought Mike Tyson um, for the second time, uh, I got a detached retina from Oliver McCall in the first fight, in the first round. But I rang it and tried to go through, but it was very risky doing what I'd done. How was the decision for you to give up boxing? It wasn't easy, you know what I mean? But I kept training, trying new things, going, you know what I mean, to do shows and whatever. But yeah, you never take the, the the buzz as boxing will give you. Especially if you've had if you've been fighting your whole life and then you've got some direction, you've got some purpose, like yeah. when that gets took away from you, like there's becomes then a big void. A void that where you think, Well fuck me, like am mm. I not good enough anymore? Do, is that when the negative I think Habit sometimes plays, slapping plays out. on your mind certain different things because some boxers haven't fulfilled and got the right money that they really deserve. And that's what a lot of them come for a lot of trouble when they finish from boxing. Do you feel as if you were used at any point? Yeah, I do. But I don't want to have this video saying, oh, he's in the podcast, he's ungrateful. I'm very ungrateful to the bottom of my heart. I can't. There's only so much money you can have. There's only so much money you can chase. And I'm very grateful. You know what I mean? I'm ducking and diving. I'm not as rich as I was when I was um, married and had the 75 acres or whatever. But it's life, man. As long as I've got a tent, a roof over my head, I'll be grateful. Because you see some people or some countries you, you go to, like Uganda and whatever, and some people, they, they do live in a shell. So I'm just grateful that I can provide for my family and still go on and make a little bit of change. Yeah, that's a great way of thinking. Yeah. That is, that's all you can do is... Be grateful yeah. for the past, learn from the mistakes and try and fucking better yourself from Definitely, them. Man. Do you know what I mean? Like, life is a mad journey, Frank. Like, you, what a career you've had and everything you achieved yeah. is, un is unbelievable. And like, even now telling your story, that people are still intrigued by it. 